Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at your news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The Municipal Court and City Prosecutor's Office joined Kansas City's Step Up program to help 70 local women resolve minor tickets and restart their lives. Many participating women are victims of domestic violence and they live at shelters across Kansas City. The Step Up program provides free legal assistance which helps the women resolve outstanding court warrants that could have prevented them from obtaining employment, housing and social service benefits. Since Step Up started in 2006, it has helped about 500 women. The City Council has just launched a new effort to revitalize the historic West Bottoms neighborhood. Council members took a tour of Kemper Arena and heard the latest details on competing redevelopment proposals. The Planning, Zoning and Economic Development Committee will spend three months focusing on this issue. There are four alternatives we're looking at. One alternative that doesn't work for anyone is status quo. Uh, uh, another alternative is the one being proposed by uh, the Fouch brothers to turn this into an amateur sports facility. Uh, the American Royal has a proposal to, that would require Kemper to be torn down and uh, replaced by a 5,000 seat arena. And then the uh, fourth, uh, fourth alternative would be a, a combination maybe of two and three. Residents can log on to the city's virtual town hall, kcmomentum.com, to share their ideas for transforming the West Bottoms and Kemper Arena. We welcome your input. The city's Rich Knoll Paysetter Award Review Board has awarded Kevin Evans, an area superintendent in the Parks and Recreation Department, with the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award. This monthly award recognizes city employees skilled in communications, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. Um, within the resolution itself, we identify a specific uh, item, a specific thing that he has done within the uh, Maple Park neighborhood uh, in the first district as it happens and a playground that was built there. Um, there are a number of parks throughout our city uh, that either do not have playgrounds or they are old playgrounds or uh, they are in need of significant upgrades and in this particular case we had a park that did not have one that was in desperate search for uh, funding for and Kevin was able to secure a grant uh, partnering with the Dwayne Bow Foundation and working with the neighborhood uh, represented by Jason Withington just right next to him from that neighborhood. Uh, they had over 60 volunteers who helped put up that playground. I, I had the fortune of being there and saying a few words um, and it was a great day and a great afternoon uh, because it brought together our city department uh, with a great neighborhood to do something special uh, for that neighborhood. Uh, Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> First, I would like to thank God, really. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. Um, second, I would like to accept the recognition, but I have to share it with um, my managers, my coworkers, my staff, and of course, Jason, and uh, other citizens like Jason. Um, again, he was the one to push this. Um, second, uh, my managers are one that uh, secured the grant. All I did was just step in there and just kind of took the uh, recognition for that. But uh, with that said, <laughs> with that said uh, no, I really appreciate the, the support that I get from my managers. Without them, I couldn't do what I do. I mean, they, they trust me. Um, they allow me to do what I do. And then to, to really have people like Jason to step in and, I mean, be persistent. Um, what else can I do but do my job? <laughs> I'm forced to do it. <laughs> but with that said, uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The award is named in honor of former assistant city manager Rich Knoll, who served the city for more than 26 years. To nominate an employee, visit kcmo.gov and type pace setter into the search bar. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Summer is in full swing, so be sure to take advantage of these fun activities at your Casey Parks facilities. It's National Parks and Recreation Month. This year's theme, Out is In, encourages everyone to do something outside every day of the month to make sure getting out becomes part of your daily routine. 
Follow hashtag KC Parks on social media during July for ideas and activities to get outside, be inspired, and change your outlook. Visit kcparks.org for the entire Out is in July calendar of outings. Our official National Parks and Recreation Month celebration, Kansas City's Big Picnic, takes place on Sunday, July 20th, as KC Parks partners with the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art to host the biggest picnic the region has ever seen. The Donald J. Hall Sculpture Park and Tice Park will be linked to become a giant space for Kansas City to come together for an evening of fun family activities. Get all the details at kcparks.org. The world's most beloved musical, The Sound of Music, is presented at Starlight Theater in Swope Park from July 25th through 31st. This true story of the Von Trapp family in Austria has it all and features some of Broadway's most well-known songs. Tickets are available at caseystarlight.com. Kansas City Parks and Recreation is planning for our future and needs your help to determine priorities. Please visit our website, kcparks.org, between now and August 1st to launch the 10-minute survey and let your voice be heard. Your thoughts and suggestions are very important to us. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513-7500. In addition to solving the crime, KCPD has always taken an active role in linking the families of homicide victims to services available to help them through an extremely difficult time. At the direction of Chief Forte, this victim-centered approach has now been expanded to reach families that are impacted by any violent crime with the creation of the Victims Assistant Unit. Director Doug Wisher explains. The staff is, consists of uh, sworn officers at this point, and uh, there's four of them. And what they do is they, they are assigned currently aggravated assaults to contact victims by phone predominantly. And they basically provide uh, assistance in, in three ways. If there's crisis intervention that's required, they'll help with that. They're trained to do that. Uh, other than that, they're going to give the victim rights information and, and compensation information that is required by state statute of our police department to provide victims. If a victim of an aggravated assault, for example, has been shot, the detective in the case will, will try to find the, the suspect and work the case, try to get it to court for trial. But in the meantime, the victim has medical bills from the, the wound may have need for trauma counseling, all those kind of things that, that, that are a result of the crime that occurred may, occur, may, may uh, resound into a, uh, a cascade of services that they need. And, and what we do is we try to hook them up with services that our community already provides, who can provide everything from basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, child care, transportation, and then we have a lot of partners that have, are helping us with, with mental health counseling, for trauma counseling, grief counseling, spiritual counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a victim advocate in Jennifer Miller who's done this for many, many years. So she's, she's been doing it over 20 years. And her focus has been predominantly with homicide victims, families, survivors of homicides. And it's been very effective. And we've, we've understood, and I think Chief understood how effective that is. But we really need to expand beyond just homicide victims' families. And having a staff to, to, to be able to do what Jennifer does with additional victims like aggravated assault, robberies, uh, sex crimes, and, and all the violent crimes that are out there uh, will really help us be able to touch a lot more people. These victim assistance specialists, they are, although they are police officers and detectives, um, they are really trained to become uh, in a very real sense, uh, an entirely different element that, than we've had in our police department. If you look at Jennifer Miller and see what she does, they're, they're going to mirror what she does. Community relations is a, is a huge piece of this. Uh, the whole point of the chief uh, with one of his strategic plan objectives was to expand community policing to the entire department. So by doing this in the Investigations Bureau, 
it's a, it's a piece that hasn't been there expanded to the extent that we, we now can do it. And we know it works. It worked with Jennifer Miller, continues to work with her. So we're giving her some additional help. The addition of the Victims Assistant Unit is one more step in KCPD's commitment to positively impact the quality of life for the community we serve. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Believe it or not, it's almost time to get the kids ready for school again. To help reduce costs for families with school-aged children, the city will participate in a sales tax holiday from Friday, August 1st through Sunday, August 3rd. During this weekend, shoppers who purchase certain items such as clothing, shoes, school supplies, and computers in Kansas City, Missouri stores will not have to pay any sales tax. The city will partner with Raytown Animal Hospital to hold free pet vaccination clinics on Saturday, July 26, from noon to 3 p.m. at the Spirit of Freedom Fountain and on Saturday, August 30th, from noon to 3 p.m. at Marlboro Park. Rabies vaccinations and microchipping will be free. However, pet owners must buy a city pet license for $10. The Public Improvements Advisory Committee, also called PIAC, is a 13-person committee that collects resident input regarding public improvements and then makes recommendations to the mayor and city council regarding the citywide and neighborhood portions of the capital budget. PIAC invites residents to attend its upcoming neighborhood hearings. These are scheduled throughout the summer. The next meeting will be held on Monday, July 21st from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Park Hill Community Education Center. For a complete list of upcoming hearings, please visit kcmo.gov and search for PIAC hearings. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.